guys and welcome back to Damo Drives bringing real reviews to real people and answering some of those questions other channels might not talk about. We've got something a bit different here. I've teamed up with Arkham Performance who are a tuning and wrapping company down in Eastbourne and they've got one of their customers and bought this beast along. I've got someone who knows pretty much everything about the car so before we go out for a drive with the owner we're going to have a look under the bonnet we'll talk about the styling because there's a lot to it. So really, over to you. Um, let's talk about the, the engine and what's happened to it. Okay, um, so this is essentially a slightly overboard uh, EJ25 engine um, with a hybrid turbo. The insides of the engine are um, made up of an RCM spec block, so it includes Amiga pistons, arrow rods, uh, ACL bearings, an RCM oil pump. Uh, it's also had a 14mm head stud conversion, some better gaskets, a slight refresh on the head as well. Um, and yeah that essentially makes up the, the the block which basically means this car can push out a little bit more power okay so at the moment what what have we got being produced at the moment it's around 400 horsepower this at the moment uh, and 400 foot pound of torque um there are plans to push that further which we can probably talk about or the owner might uh, have a chat to you about later yeah. but it's been so we should we say future proofed uh <laughs> for uh, for more power because power you know absolute power corrupts absolutely doesn't it? So <laughs> customers do like uh yeah they get bored quickly yeah exactly it does look awesome it really stands out i suppose the biggest thing for me is this wrap that you've yes. done yes yeah. so this is um it's called hope green uh it's, it's made by a company called avery denison um and it sort of switches between sort of four different colors you've got kind of a gold a green uh, a bronze a brown and it flips in between all of those kind of colors depending on what kind of light it's under it's a really impressive kind of uh, finish this one looks awesome. it's satin as well the finish yeah. on it really really like it. so i've not seen another car i don't think in this particular color no hopefully not as well yeah it's, it's, it's a new color to avery denison so we we got it quite soon to the, it being produced as well so you'll probably start seeing more of it pop up over time but yeah there's not many uh there's not many that i've seen so the ecu has that been remapped uh yes yeah, the ecu tech re um that's been mapped by um duncan at race dynamics uh, he's quite well known in the Subaru world. Um, essentially, um, the engine was put together by uh, Julian Godfrey Motorsport, who are specialists in rallycross um, and worked on Ken Block's car, for example. Um, lots of lots of cool stuff they've been involved with. So the engine is, uh, is is really solid. We then put the we refresh the heads and put it all put together, um, and then like I say, it's mapped by Duncan. It's it is awesome. It, it's been EJ25. It does sound slightly definite because of the... Um, yes, it's got equal length manifold. That's the one. Yes, I knew yes, there was so a... It's got equal length manifold on it. Um, so it does get... Uh, it's a little less Subaru sounding, but it's still a Subaru. It still sounds like a Subaru. Um, that's, that was the customer's option, along with an in-gen downpipe uh, and an NVIDIA um, catback exhaust system. Which gives a bit more, doesn't it, really? Yeah, it's, which is more free-flowing and yeah, yeah just it, it, it means that you're able to produce a bit more power. The standard exhaust systems on these are restricted, you know, get down to a very small pipe diameter in places. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that just helps the uh, exhaust gases. Yeah. Have we out. got any sort of change styling-wise on uh, the it's front got a, Yeah, it's got a carbon kit on it. Um, the carbon fiber splitter, um, cooling ducts on the side, side skirts, and a strafe design um, rear diffuser on it, which is yeah. a recent application, okay. that one that's just gone on. Oh, and also the lights are aftermarket. They're made in Australia. I can't remember the brand, the customer source these. Yeah. Um, just a bit more modern look to go with the, the sort of revamped exterior. Exactly, so should we have a wander around the side? Sure. So if I talk first of all, I think about these cool looking wheels and then we're going to suspension. So wheel-wise, what have we got? Uh, so they're Japan Racing 18-inch wheels, uh, finished in a uh, satin uh, bronze rim and a um, matte bronze uh, centre. Um, different wheel bolts, uh, and obviously the Nankang tyres, which you can see the customers branded. I love with that. The, uh, yeah, with the <laughs> tyre writing. They've got to stick it on, haven't they? It's not, yeah. It doesn't come with it. Well, sort of comes with it, but it does. But I love that. They are that... Yeah, they are Nankang tyres. They are NS2Rs, which are a great sort of... Uh, uh, compromised road tyre but you can also use a little bit on track as well yeah. um, but they work they still work well in the wet as well no, that's cool so suspension wise uh, bc it's... racing coilovers uh, standard spring rates uh, that they supply with the kits on these um, just lower the ride height slightly um, done a few bits to the geometry as well um, just to make it drive a bit better um, and handle a bit more uh, stable in the corners it's quite low isn't it 
yeah it's not lowered too much but yeah obviously with the addition of the carbon skirts and stuff it gives that impression of being even lower yeah no it looks really smart so just quickly going back um cooling and things on the engine what have we yeah, done so under there to say, like we said before to kind of, we like to over engineer and then sort of wind them back a bit this car is capable of running up to sort of 600 horsepower um, but the other bolt-on stuff we've got on there or it's got a special hybrid turbo on there at the moment which essentially is in the stock frame um but eventually like i said to you the customer will talk to you about he's going to move on to other things but to keep everything in check engine temps wise you've got mishimoto oil cooler uh mishimoto radiator uh mishimoto um induction kit and Mishimoto, well that's not cooling, but um, a Mishimoto induction kit and also the Mishimoto uh, front mount intercooler as well with all the crackle black finish uh, pipe work. Yeah, no, it's important that it's uh, not just give it more power, but to keep look it's after the engine. Power and reliability, exactly, yeah. yeah, it's power and reliability. You don't want to, we're not going for headline power figures with this vehicle. Um, it will have more power, like I say, in due course, but we want it drivable. We want it to boost early. We want it to pull well in all the gears. Essentially, it's a, a good fun road car that can be used as well on track. I think the back of the Impreza, it's probably the wing is the most iconic part of this really, isn't it? Yeah, um, it's got a couple of uh, pairing uprights, as you can see the uh, the black uprights in the middle here, um, which just give it a bit more of a WRC, if you like, inspired look. Well, however, there are plans to change this whole uh, section to carbon fibre at a later Oh, rate. okay, that's yeah. cool. So, quad exhaust we mentioned already. Yeah, it's the NVIDIA catback, beautifully made systems. Um, yeah, and, and sounds fantastic, which obviously yeah. you'll hear on the test drive. Yeah. Yeah, and we've got diffuser, I think that's just come in, isn't it? Yeah, it came in a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it was a long wait on that one. It's a strafe design part. Um, so yeah, customer literally bolted that on uh, last week. Does look angry. It's, it's, I love the back of this. Um, it's probably to me the most iconic part of the car. Well, the hood scoop and this part of any yeah definitely and the, the, the diffuser kind of just gives it a bit more aggression because the rest of the car certainly has that and then it just looked a little unfinished at the back so yeah it was a good uh, choice by the customer on this yeah. to uh yeah to get this uh this strafe design rear diffuser on it yeah no i'm 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 looking forward to this so we had a look around i think it looks awesome hopefully it comes out on camera how good it actually looks but i'm looking forward to driving it driving um just want to give a shout out to your instagram because i know you're trying to build that so where can we find you on instagram uh, you can find us it's a bit of a weird one but it's double underscore hope sti double underscore there we go so i'll put that up on the the screen so if you want to follow the progress of this car um that'd be cool so we're going to go out along these lovely country roads uh, we've had a look around the outside and we can see what the car is capable of and then afterwards, I will be jumping in the seat and having a go myself. But I suppose we'll start off with the actual, what this car was originally. So it's a special name to it. Yeah, the name's too long, but this is, it's technically a Pro R 340 model. Um, it's not quite Pro Drive, because they didn't do the Pro Drive for this car, but this is the Pro R 340. Yeah. Okay, so it's, I guess, as the name said, 340 PS, yeah, I'd originally. guess, yeah. <laughs> originally. So we're, you know, added another 60 pretty much onto that. Yeah, near enough. And how long have you had the car, car for? Uh, so I've owned this for three years. Um, it's been a bit of an up and down three years, but I've owned it for three years. <laughs> And when did you start getting the uh, modding bug to this car? So the wheels and the suspension were done pretty much immediately because uh, it was just the standard wheels and it just didn't really do anything. So the wheels and the suspension got done straight away. And then done a few track days in it, ended up blowing the engine up. And then from that point was when we started doing the actual mods to it. Is that being set up to be quite firm or is it just the type of 
suspension? Uh, yeah, when the uh, suspension was bought, the spring the springs were set to just standard uh, spring rate, but the damping is set so it's more track based. I mean, coilover is bumpy anyway, but it doesn't help that this car is a very heavy car. It is. Yeah. Blimey, I would have thought. I always thought with the boxster engine it was about low centre of gravity being lighter. Yeah, it's still, it's still quite a heavy car for what it is. It's, oh, it's starting to make the right noises with the dump valve there and we're only just pottering along at the moment and it's just the drama of it isn't it? It's a big wing, angry looking, pops, yeah. whistles, whooshes. <laughs> Oh, it's very theatrical when you're driving it, it does make a lot of noises. It's not really going to be under the radar type of car, but I don't no. think you buy it for that reason. No. We're in this awesome looking wrap and uh, not seen anything, yeah, right, yeah. Not seen anything quite like this before, um, certainly not in this colour. What made you choose this sort of, this colour of wrap? Yeah, I'm a big fan of green anyway, but I saw this when Avery first brought out this colour. I saw it, I liked it, but the only problem with wraps is there is so much out there to choose from. You kind of get stuck in there, there's too much choice. So uh, we kind of went through and through maybe 15 different colours and then eventually just thought, you know, we'll go with the first choice. Yeah. <laughs> Turns out it was the right choice to be honest. The thing that makes this very special is the type of all-wheel drive system isn't it it's the you split yeah. the power you've got is it right you've got two diffs in this one at the front one at the back yes yeah because you don't really notice the the diff working unless you're on track okay when you're on track that's when you really you can really feel the diff working um when i first got this car it was kind of here not there it was just, yeah it has an intelligent diff but when you actually when you're on track and you can feel it working that's when you go okay right now i see what it does <laughs> It hasn't got much lag, but it's the responsiveness. This has a, uh, this is a stage two uh, ACT clutch flywheel. So the revs are so light in it. So the responsiveness with the turbo as well, when you're changing, when you're shifting, yeah. um, it's just snappy, it's just instant. So we've got three different driving modes, haven't we? So we've got sport, sport sharp, and the intelligent. intelligent. So, what does the intelligent one? Is it intelligent? <laughs> it's, I wouldn't say it was intelligent. All, all the intelligent does is it brings the bar pressure down, it slackens off the throttle response, and it gives you indicators where to change. Oh, okay. That is, that is it. it. Yeah, so these are the eight pot case bore brakes. Wow. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's the big brake conversion for it. Because it was going to be running more boost in the future. And obviously with track days, um, you can't have more, more power and not more stopping power. It just <laughs> yeah. doesn't work. It's a pair of a, a hairpin or something like that, a rapid brake yeah. knots and go, oh, gravel, no, no. <laughs> just under 400 brake that the way it pulls you back in the seat it doesn't really do it i don't know if you said it had five or six under brake i wouldn't be surprised just yeah. the way it feels i think it's the delivery because it's it's quite it's quite linear it comes on boost quite quick when it actually hits boost it does tend to pick up very quick but then again i think that's just down to obviously the parts being light and parts and stuff eventually it's going to be changed to a uh a garrett turbo and um we're going to do the fuel in, uh, do some head work, and we're going to get it to, uh, we're going to aim for the 500 mark. So it's my understanding that the diff system in this, it's not a bias diff. Yeah. It controls the lock and how much lock you can have in a diff. So if you set it manually, you can set, obviously, if you want it full locks or if you want to have a little bit of slippage in it, 
but you also have an auto setting which is you can set it to auto soft or auto locked or however you want to do it i don't believe it's a ratio thing no. so the shift's in <laughs> it's not a long drawn out shift because no. you've got the flywheel the, the revs drop quite nicely so you can get into the uh, you can get the changes quite quick behind the wheel now that the clutch is very very heavy um what do you how much was this rated to did you say uh, so it's an act uh, stage two clutch and it's rated to it's about 580 foot pound of torque So a massive thank you for letting me drive your car. It's uh, awesome in every way. It looks fantastic. It drives just as well. Still trying to get over the clutch on it, but it's epic. It is so quick. You can get all of that power down. Um, so yeah, thank you very much. So guys, make sure you go and follow Danny on Instagram because we've got a number of changes coming up. So you really want to keep an eye out. So put his details down below so anyway guys thanks for watching the video i hope you've enjoyed it as much as i have driving this absolute monster oh hang on oh my goodness me <laughs> anyway i'm getting sidetracked i hope you've enjoyed this car as much as i have if you have please give me a thumbs up comments are always welcome and remember to click on the subscribe button thanks for watching